We're the Indie Project, B and Theo, and we've been living and travelling the world in vans for the past six years. We're currently renovating an abandoned stone barn in Portugal to turn into a beautiful tiny home for us and our cats, Gingy Bear and Fernando. Follow our journey from the very beginning as we document the whole process of creating an off-grid home. Good morning guys, welcome back to a brand new video here from our property in sunny central Portugal. It is a stunning day today and I can't wait to crack on with our mezzanine barrier and the sun is welcomed after all the rain we've been having recently. So before I get on with the rest of my day and film this video, I just wanted to talk a little bit about B, where she is and what's going on. And the last week has been incredibly tough again. It's really horrible to see her in the state that she was in. And she's left her property and she's gone back to the UK to be around her mom and her sister and family because she just needs a break. She's been really honest about her mental health and her struggles with PMDD. So if you look on her personal Instagram, that is where you'll find more stuff about how she's getting on and things like that. But yeah, the struggles with mental health and mental health in general is, it's, it's very similar to physical health. People don't see it like that, but you can have flare ups just because you're on medication and just because you've got things in place doesn't mean that you can't get ill again and you know you do have setbacks that's all part of the journey and all I can do for B is just carry on with this project so make it as comfortable as possible so when she does come back hopefully soon should be a lot more you know settled and relaxed and and more things are in place because living off grid is incredibly tough and it's not living off grid that is part of the problem really but it's just another thing on top of everything else that is going on with with her with her brain essentially her brains are funny things and very complex things and yeah i i don't know what more i can say really I, I can't give you guys any answers like it's just it's one of them things that we just need to keep working on and keep making sure that more things are in place so that this doesn't happen again. So as I'm now here on my own, I've set up kind of like a morning routine of what I do, get the animals fed and watered. And obviously we've got more and more animals now. We've got the goats, they need food, they need water, they need, they need people to hang out with. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do after I've fed the chickens. And I'm actually gonna let the chickens out because as much as we can, we love to just free range the chickens they have a great time all over the property and we have noticed that they are amazing for keeping bugs down and now we're into spring we're going to be coming into summer that is when the big scary like moth crickets and like weird bugs come out and we've noticed that where the chickens are and around this part of the property where the chickens hang out that there's actually like none of them bugs anymore which is incredible So 
So the first job of the day is to clean out their water and fill it up because it's getting low and also their food as well is getting a little bit low. So I'm gonna fill that to the top, fill this to the top and they'll be happy. But that'll probably last them a, a couple days to be fair. I can see that this grain's running out of this bucket so I'll write on my phone a little reminder next time in the city pick up some some chicken feed there we go that's plenty go and put this in there little the little playground I like to call it. It's where we keep them. Basically, if we go off the property, they're not they're not just out on their own because you could have fox attacks. So we've got a, a secure area where they hang out and this is where I'm gonna put their food and water so they can go back there anytime. So now the chickens have been fed and watered and released onto the property to free range wherever they wish. I'm gonna drive down in the car because when I was last in the city, I picked up two bags of goat feed. So I'm gonna take that down to the goats, make sure they got enough water, enough food, cut them some fresh branches to eat because they love that and check their bedding and just hang out with them. Right, so what we need to do is go and get that big bin that's over there. It's completely empty with food, so that's why I brought the car down. I've got all the food in the car. I'm gonna fill that bucket up and it's really good because it's sealed. Nothing can get into it. No rain can get into it and it's located in their pen. So hopefully they don't get too clever and work out that's where all the food is stored. Otherwise I start breaking into it. So we have lots of individual buckets for them to eat out of because there's four goats. It's nice for them to have their own bucket of feed each basically and then they don't start fighting as much over the food. But what I'm doing is I'm just cleaning out the buckets because if it gets moisture in them or it rains, the grain sticks to the bottom. And they're civilized goats. They like to eat out of a clean bucket recently brought them this football. I haven't seen them playing with it yet, but I'm hoping one day I'll come down and they're having a two-a-side game of footy.
I don't know if you guys can hear in the background, but the crickets are going crazy. They're so loud. It feels like spring has definitely sprung. And I'd just like to say thanks to Surfshark who has sponsored today's video. Surfshark is a virtual private network that keeps your data and personal information safe whenever you're online by using encryption, which is especially important when you're using public Wi-Fi. Unlike other VPNs, you can use Surfshark on an unlimited amount of devices. Me and B use it regularly. In fact, it automatically connects whenever we start our laptops, giving us peace of mind that our data is secure. And what's even more impressive is Surfshark automatically blocks 1 million malicious websites, phishing methods, and other threats. Traveling the world virtually has got to be my favorite feature. At the click of a button, you can catch up on your favorite show from back home whilst traveling, or if you keep hearing about a show that's unavailable in your region, you can easily switch up your virtual location by choosing it from the search menu. Surfshark are currently giving our community an epic 83% off and three months extra free. All you gotta do is click the link in our description and use the code the Indie Projects. No, this is the problem with the car. There's so many different bits of metal that, that the bags can rip on. They're just paper bags. The first one's already ripped and now the second one's ripped. I think Ricky's gonna have to put the camera down and come and give me a hand. <laughs> Yeah. Whoever buys this car after us is going to be finding goat food for the rest of their lives. That stuff's just going to get tucked under the seat everywhere. It's quite a lot in the car, but it's not too bad. We got away pretty lightly considering. They're just really flimsy paper bags. And when you're putting it in a car with the seats down, they have these metal bits where the seats slot in together and it just rips the bag. Highs and lows of living on a farm. <laughs> okay, it's one of my shoes. They got loads. They, don't, they actually don't drink tons of water. I imagine through the summer they're going to be drinking more and more, but we've got a nice big um, trough for them to drink out of. So generally don't have to clean that out very often. They're really good actually. They don't, they don't poo in their water. They don't get their water dirty. So it makes our life easier. I just got to check their food inside. Fill up this bucket here. I can just swap this one for this. There we go, the goats are done for another day. Now 
all of the animals are fed I can start working on the mezzanine barrier again and as you can see the barn's a little bit of a state because I've been oiling all of the wood it's a step that takes a while because you need to let it dry so it's almost like a day just to oil it let it dry and then the next day I can work on it which is today so yeah better crack on but I'm gonna kind of just dry fit the metal rods and make sure everything line lines up nicely now they're all painted got my black metal rods that we painted they look really nice actually it's gonna look really smart and I'm just gonna bang them in this hole along the bottom beam is a lot tighter than the top beam so we've got a little bit of wiggle room but the bottom beam will keep the rods in place and that means I don't need to use any glue or any fixings hopefully so yeah I'm just gonna go for it figure out which way I want the rod So we have just dry fitted the mezzanine barrier, one of them in place, and it looks so good. I've been up and down the ladder, seeing how it looks from various different angles, and it's amazing. And look at this, you'll all be happy to know that when I'm sleeping, if I roll off, I'm just gonna get wedged between the barrier and the bed, and it will stop me from, uh, from sudden death once I hit the floor. So that's a good thing. but. I'm so happy with how it's turned out. We've just got the task of like bolting it all together, but I'm not gonna do that right now because we still need to continue building the other one because I was waiting for the rebar, I picked up rebar yesterday. So I can cut all the rebar down, paint it, and then we can put the other one together and bolt them down at the same time, it makes more sense. just cut the remaining pieces of rebar that we need to build the other side of the mezzanine barrier and you can see down here we've got about 15 metal rods that have already been done that's had one coat so we've got five left to do for the first coat and then tomorrow morning I will do the second coat on the five and I'm going to do the second coat on the 15 right now I hope that's not too complicated to, to understand. It's a very slow process, this building method, because it's just quite precise. Everything has to be perfectly aligned to look right. But as we've just seen of how it looks on the mezzanine, it looks incredible. It's exactly how we wanted it. And I just actually sent a photo to B and she's so stoked. She's absolutely loving it. So it's a beautiful day. I'm gonna get painting.
finishing off the last metal rod. It's a really slow process and it's a really warm day and that is why I'm painting out here and then taking them into the tent to dry off because it's like a sauna in that tent but they will dry off nicely in there. The reason I'm leaving them to dry in the tent is because out here it just gets covered in like dust and stuff that's blowing around and there is gusts of wind today so I don't want to risk it because the way you put this paint on is fairly thick and uh, the last thing I want is just our nice new banister covered in like grit and dust but yeah that's it final one and uh, I think I'm I'm due a five minute break <laughs> inside the barn it's always nice to spend time in here and I've just been outside sanding the treads I think that's what you call them that's what I'm calling them the treads for the sladder and what I'm gonna do is get on the Danish oil so I'm only gonna Danish oil the sides and the underside because I'm gonna screw down from the top and plug the holes so that means I'm gonna have to sand off the top to sand down the plugs and cut the plugs off flush just like I did with the rest of the sladder so yeah it's a little bit of a process but it will be worth it because I mean just look at this grain that's popped out since I put the Danish oil on there it's just beautiful it really just accentuates everything and you know we've gone with that theme because that's what we've done for the rest of the building and it's worked so far so I trust it. <laughs> So with the Danish oil, a small amount goes a long way. You don't want to kind of slather it on. And that is why, just spread it out, get it in all the cracks and all the knots. And then what I do is each, each surface, once I'm done, I just get some paper towel or a cloth or anything that won't come off into the oil so here I've just literally just got some toilet roll and all I'm gonna do now as you can see there's like a sheen to that and all you want to do pop that down get a bit of toilet tissue and just wipe off the excess and that gives a really nice finish There we go, look at the difference. That side to that side. Just accentuates the grain and is so much nicer and protects the wood. You know, you could you could drop liquid on it and, and whatnot and because it's oiled, it won't damage it. So the brush I'm using for this is this really cheap brush and I wouldn't recommend it. It's fine for just doing the treads it's a really small amount of uh, surface area I need to go over but with all the other stuff that you saw that I showed you this morning that was all done with a really high grade brush and I definitely recommend it because like no bristles are gonna come off it's just it's way nicer to use and just goes on much nicer with the oil
it's turned into an absolutely lovely evening, but I'm not gonna lie, I'm completely knackered now. I've achieved so much today. And I've got some really good news actually, because I just had the vet over. The farm vet came, because he needed to give the uh, vaccinations and the deworming to the goats. And Wally was here, he also came to check on Matilde. She's, she had kind of like a lump on her cheek, so we wanted to get the vet to look at it to make sure everything was okay. And it turns out she actually had a piece of cork wedged in the side of her mouth and an abscess had grown around it. So he managed to pull that out, clean up the abscess and she's back to normal. Her face has just gone completely back down. So that is absolutely brilliant news. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see, but Matilde, her face is back to normal, which is absolutely brilliant. And what I'm gonna do now is just go and find the bit of cork that she actually swallowed because I don't wanna re-eating that and having to start the process all over again. And also the cork trees that you can see here, I'm gonna wrap them in wire like I have with the pine tree to make sure that they don't eat any more cork. Any bits of cork that were lying around, are now completely gone out of their enclosure. So it was just over here somewhere, the vet threw it. There it is. Pick that up. Some tissue. And you can see the size of that compared to my hand. I've got really big hands and that was fully wedged in the side of her cheek. I know I keep saying it, but I'm so happy that she's had that sorted out now and the vet's really good, really like him. He's a young guy and you know, he does a good job. So it's brilliant to know someone local in the area who can help you out with the animals when you need it. And I think I'm gonna end the video there because like I said, I'm really tired. I need to go and cook some food. I'm really hungry. And I think today has been a really good day. I've achieved a lot and I'm really looking forward to finishing the banister now for the mezzanine. It, it really is coming along and I'm so happy with how it all turned out. So thank you for joining me on this video and I'll catch you on the next one.